guys, today we are going to be making little Christmas tree pillow ornaments using the IOD paint inlays. I'm using the chintz inlay today and I'm using pastel colors. Um, so if you want to use colors that aren't pastels, obviously go for it. Um, we have a very pastel Christmas house, so it's perfect for our decor. And I have a little bit of um, heavyweight fabric. I love using um, painter's tarps. I just find that they're absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of one of the inlays that I have here, and I'm just gonna use small portions of it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint little swatches on my painter's tarp here. So I like to do um, a nice little base layer first, and then once the fabric is fully saturated and covered, I'll do just a little bit more um, so that the inlays have something wet to kind of sit in. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this one down. I'm trying to figure out the best way to lay it down so I can kind of get as much of this in the paint as possible. Then you know the drill from here. Basically, we just need to let these dry 100% and once they're dry we're going to come back and release the tissue backing off. Our pieces are completely dry at this point. Okay so all the paint is totally dry and you'll notice that the paper has a bit of a foggy look to it instead of being almost transparent. It's the same way with all three of them. Okay and then what you do is you're just going to kind of take a little spray bottle with some water on it, wet your tissue backing, and you're just gonna gently pull the away. And what you'll have left is um, the pretty little inlay left in your paint swatch. Okay, so my pieces are um, free of any of the tissue backing. And now what I've done is I've cut a piece of the paint drop to match the back of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and create little tree shapes um, on the surface. And if you want to just freehand this, you can absolutely do that. You don't have to have a pencil. And then when you're all done doing this, basically you can pin it and stitch it. I don't even bother to pin it. I just run it through the sewing machine. So, so I went ahead and cut one of these little pieces. I'm going to start at the bottom and leave myself about an inch of an opening at the bottom here. And I am using a really old Singer. It's a workhorse of a machine. Okay, and then from here, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and um, snip off my edge. I'm gonna leave at least a quarter of an inch um, because when this unfrays a little bit, sometimes you can get really close to the stitch edge and it's a little precarious. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now, if you are um, absolutely horrified, that I am doing this um, wrong side out, you can always flip these and do them right side without any frayed edge. But you'll see in a minute that I actually fray it on purpose. So I'm just snipping off my extra threads here. And of course I'm gonna stitch that closed. And then what I do is I take my scissors and kind of just hold this edge between my fingers and I run my scissors along the edge to intentionally fray it. I really like the um, frayed and organic edge on it. I have my batting here and I'm going to use the end of my pencil, the eraser point, not the sharp writing point. And I'm just going to very, very um, sparingly stuff my little tree. You don't want this to be like bulging. It's just meant to give it a little bit of extra 3D interest. And it's better to kind of do in small poofs of um, the batting so that they don't get too large in certain areas. So just kind of keep little small bundles as you insert the stuffing into your ornament. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish my stitch on the machine real quick and I'll come right back. So the ornament is fully closed at the bottom, okay? And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add on a few vintage buttons as well as some hand-dyed ribbon that'll act as my hanger. So what I do is I kind of just bring my ends over. And again, you could have done this where the um, ribbons were actually stitched in during the process of your tree sewing, 
but I like mine organic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on the back, place my little button on top, and I like my, um, my embroidery floss to be um, exposed. So I'm actually gonna be tying this in the front of the button and not hiding it in the back. And then leave at least a quarter inch tail on both ends. And I just take my finger over the edge and kind of make the threads go a little haphazard. I feel like they add a ton of character to the front when you leave them exposed. And like I said, some can be um, stitched nice and neat and the threads can be done in the back. You know, it's really up to you in terms of like how you want your um, finished look to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch on a few more buttons here and I'll come back in a sec. And there you have it. You have your own little um, chintz inspired Christmas tree and you can hang the ornament from your tree or you can hang it from Christmas presents or whatever you'd like. Um, I did do this one and I drilled a hole in a vintage um, element I found and this one just kind of stands and I'll share a picture at the end so it's nice and clear. It sort of stands on the stand which is really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you.